Hey everybody, Ace Trenilium here. It's undeniable that Pokemon Sun and Moon broke the mold of the Pokemon main series video game format. With drastic changes like the removal of HMs, the replacement of Pokemon Gyms with Island Trials and Kahuna Battles, and the introduction of Alolan Forms. Alolan Form Pokemon are alternate versions of Kanto Pokemon, with the explanation being that the climate and lifestyle of Alola has caused these Pokemon to undergo radical changes. For example, a 35 foot tall Executor, a Persian that actually looks like a Persian cat, and a Raichu that apparently has psychic powers because it ate so many f***ing pancakes. Much like when Alolan forms were first revealed in the run up to Pokemon Sun and Pokemon Moon, the announcement of Pokemon Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon has got the Pokemon community buzzing with speculation as to what Pokemon are going to be the next ones to get the Alola form treatment. Of course being the Ayatollah of originality that I am, I figured I'd jump on the bandwagon and bring you my 5 Pokemon I hope get Alolan forms in Pokemon Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon. Quick disclaimer, I'm only going to be using Pokemon that are featured in the Kanto Pokedex. The reason being is that so far we've only seen Alolan forms of Kantonian Pokemon. I'm also not going to be using any Pokemon that already live in Alola in their normal Kantonian forms because they already live there, it's kind of pointless. Wow Liam, why do I make this list predictable? <sighs> and you people wonder why I hardly turn up anymore. All the images of new Alolan Pokemon you're gonna see today were designed for me by the fantastic Adam Drexler. You can follow him on Twitter here and I'll put a link in the description. He's fantastic and thank you so much Adam for doing these for me. With all that out of the way, let's count down some new Alolan forms. Number 5 Pokemon Sun and Moon brought us a heap of brand new Pokemon with some really interesting real life origins, like Crabrawler, based off the coconut crab. One idea I had is that maybe a certain Pokemon, mistakenly brought over on ships from Kanto, had taken exception to the Gen 7 Crab Pokemon, and over time adapted its physiology to combat or even eradicate the Crabrawler population. These Pokemon of course, Crabby and Kingler. Originally pure water types, these Pokemon have inherited the fighting type, making them dual water and fighting Pokemon. By virtue of studying Crabrawler's battle tactics and fighting style, in preparation for the day that Crabby and Kingler finally conquer Alola. When it comes to abilities, I'd actually keep these Pokemon with the same abilities they normally get. After all, Hypercutter, which prevents the attack stat from being lowered, Shell Armor, which protects the Pokemon from critical hits, and Sheer Force, which increases the power of moves with additional effects in exchange for removing those additional effects, are all great abilities for these fighting and water type crab battlers. Number 4. Next up we have, well, no real law behind this one. I just think it'd be cool if we took Ponyta and Rapidash, swapped out the fire typing for the ice type, and gave these beautiful creatures the special treatment they deserved. And give that bloody Rapidash some bloody wings and slap on the bloody flying type for God's sake. It's amazing just how beautiful these creatures could be if we just left them up Mount Larnaquila for a little bit. I mean look what happened to Vulpix and Ninetales. When it comes to abilities, I'd give Ponyta and Rapidash the primary ability Refrigerate, which turns normal type moves into ice type moves. And for the hidden ability, I guess I'd give them ice bar which allows them to regenerate HP during a hailstorm. Number 3 so we all know how unstable coughing and wheezing are, constantly mixing the toxic gases within their bodies. But what if life in the Alolan climate, aka tropical heat, brought these Pokemon to a whole new level of unstable? I pictured these Pokemon's internal concoctions developing away from the realms of toxic or poison, into that of more, shall we say, combustible elements, morphing them into living bombs, and essentially turning them into fire types. The levitate ability would be retained by these Pokemon since they do kind of Float, but that would be their hidden ability. Their primary ability would be a brand new one based on their unstable structure and their tendency to overheat and explode. The ability explosive would be a shiny hunter's nightmare. Every time a Pokemon with this ability uses a move, be it a status move like Thunder Wave or Will-O-Wisp or an attacking move like Tackle or Sludge Bomb, that move would have a 1 in 10 chance of not happening and instead explosion happening in its place. It's evil, I know, but it makes these two Pokemon terrifyingly unpredictable. Number 2 I'm a big fan of Doduo and Dodrio. They're great Pokemon. Doduo is cute and endearing, and Dodrio is super fast and has a hell of a mean streak. The one thing that's bothered me all this time about these two Pokemon is that they're flying types, when they're based on ostriches and emus, which are flightless birds. I could very easily see Doduo and Dodrio being imported from Kanto to Alola to be used as ride Pokemon to travel great distances at great speeds, and I could see them losing their flying typing, and by virtue of being used kind of like machines, 
developing the machine-like Steel-type, thus becoming Dual-type, Normal and Steel-type Pokemon. These robotic manifestations of Doduo and Dodrio would have the ability Sturdy, which makes up for their low defense and special defense, and their hidden ability would be Heatproof, since they're Steel-types, but they are accustomed to the warm Alolan climate. Number 1 one of my favourite evolutionary lines in Pokemon of all time is the Bellsprout line. Ever since I took my first Victory Bell all the way to the Indigo League, and ever since I saw that one Bellsprout that kicked the crap out of Ash's Bulbasaur, I've had a soft spot for this quirky trio of Pitcher Plant Pokemon. In the Alolan climate, I could see these Pokemon taking a step in Marowak's direction, not only adapting to the Alolan climate, but also adopting some of the tribal culture. These grass and poison Pokemon would become grass and fire, and would resemble ancient tribal masks. Flame Body would be a given for these Pokemon, but I could also see them with abilities like Intimidate, lowering the opponent's attack stat, and also White Smoke, which prevents stat changes. I'm not sure about you guys, but I'd love to see that happen in Pokemon Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon. And congrats to Adam for designing them all. So don't forget to leave a comment and tell me which Pokemon you'd like to see with an Alolan form in Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon. You can follow me on Twitter here, and of course until next time, I'm Ace Trainer Liam. Keep on training.